Okay, that was it. That was the entirety of step two. Not much there. What is the third and most important step? What are we going to do? Yeah, Erica. Very good. I'm going to now set about proving now that the statement, if it's true for this one, will be true for the next value along, which is my k plus 1. So I'm going to prove true for n equals k plus 1. So I'm going to write this equation again, but for the next one over instead of for this one. So it's 5 to the k plus 1. There's the plus 3. Now, what will my next line be? Or rather the other side of this line. I want this to also be divisible by 4, yeah? So it's going to have to be 4 times a number, right? What is that number going to be? And the answer is, I don't know. That number over here depends on what k and k plus 1 are. They could be anything right now. So, sorry, I know it's kind of alphabet soup at, the, soup at the moment, but I still have to introduce another protein rule. Relax, it's the last one. This one was P. I'm going to call the next one Q. And Q, just like P, has to be a positive integer. Okay, I promise I'm not putting any more letters into here. That's it. Okay? Let's do this proof then. 5 to the k plus 1 equals 3 equals that. That's my goal. Now we know what we want to do is work with all this logic and somehow use, I'm going to highlight it in red here, somehow use this statement here, right? The inductive hypothesis. I want to shape my equations so that I can make use of this because I'm assuming that it's true. So I want to kind of refer to it in some way, okay? So here's what I'm going to do with this statement, right? Here's my proof. I'm going to take the left-hand side. This is a common way to begin. Here's what the left-hand side looks like at the moment. It's just 5 to the k plus 1 plus 3. Now, have a look at the inductive hypothesis. 5 to the k plus 3, our assumption. Do you see that this assumption, the left-hand side of this assumption, is tucked away in the left-hand side of this? We just need to like tease it out a little bit, right? For instance, there's a plus 3 here, and there's a plus 3 there. So you don't have to touch that at all, right? Now there's a 5 to the k here, where is that hiding in there? Can someone tell me a way I could rewrite this that would make it a bit clearer? Yeah, Aaron. Okay, if we remember our index laws, then we know that that means 5 times 5 to the k. That's what the plus 1 means, right? Multiply it again. So you can see in here, should complete the line, in here is clearly, well there's 5 lots of 5 to the k. So if I just want one of them, I'm going to break this apart into two pieces. There are four of them over here, and then there's another one over here. Is that okay? Do you see I've just oops, used the right color. I've just broken this one, there's five there, into two lots. There's four over here and one there. Are you okay with that piece of logic? Do you see now where this is going to lead in terms of my proof, where that, that magical four appeared? So I've still at the end of the line written there. Okay, are you right with that? So what I'm doing is I'm trying to massage the equation I'm working with so that I can use the inductive hypothesis, the assumption, which is what I'm about to do right now. This 4 times 5 to the k is hanging out the front, but I, in the middle of my proof, assumed that this 5 to the k plus 3, this 5 to the k plus 3, I assumed that that was divisible by 4. I assumed it was a multiple of 4. So I'm going to substitute it for a multiple of 4, namely this, right? So I've done my substitution. Now to highlight, because this is a proof by mathematical induction, what am I going to do here now that I've used the assumption? I'm going to put big flashing lights, right? I'm going to wave a flag and I'm going to say, hey, by assumption. Because that's, after all, what I did. I assumed that something was true, okay? Now, are you almost there? Do I, do I need to push a little bit further on this? What was my goal in the end? Have a look. I've written it right down the bottom here. I want to show that this thing, the left-hand side, is four times a positive integer. Can I do that here? What would I do? Can you give me one word? Maybe start with an F. I'm going to factorize, right? Everything has a four on it, right? Four times what's going to be left? Five to the K plus P. Okay, now have a look, have a look, be careful. 
it's not just enough to say that some number is four times something else, right? Because if you said that it's four times a fraction, that would not be divisible by four. How do you know this is going to be a whole number, a positive integer? Have a look at it carefully. Take it one step at a time. Have a look at this guy. What do you know about pay? You don't know very much about p. It could be anything, but what you do know is that p is a positive integer. Yes? Do you, do you see now actually it is important to put this even though it's a, a very minor piece of the working? Uh, what about this guy? 5 to the k. What do you know about k? Ooh, that was naughty. I didn't put that in myself. Let's fix that. k has to be like n, right? And we actually said something about n earlier that it's a positive integer. So. If k is a positive integer, then what's 5 to the k going to be? Like here's, here's a 5 to the k, there's one of them. Here's another 5 to the k, or another one, or, you know, another one. What can you tell me about all of these numbers, even though you don't know how big they are? They're all going to be positive integers, right? There's no way you can get a fraction out of this. How would you get a fraction, by the way? If you, you can get a fraction out of 5 to the power of something, what would you do? You'd put a negative in, right? Like say that. But k can't be that. k has to be a positive integer, right? Uh, what could you do to make it negative? Could you do anything to make it negative? No, you can't. Exponentials have, think about the range of an exponential. It'll never go below the x-axis. So this is a positive integer. This is a positive integer. What happens when you add two positive integers together? You get another positive integer. So therefore, therefore, I can say that's four times. Well, I'm just going to call that positive integer Q. That's it. Where Q is this. There you go. Right? So I'm, I'm done. There's my left-hand side. Here's my right-hand side. And uh, I'm not sure if Mrs. Lee's referred to this because she didn't have to now for you guys, but we used to have to write this long essay down here to explain, it's like three or four lines to explain how all this logic fits together. Um, but we've now, mercifully for you guys, decided, no, we don't need to do that. We've done all of the work, all the logic is intact. All you have to say is proven by the principle of mathematical induction. And if you're super lazy, and in a hurry, you could just write PMI, but being that past generations you have to write like 50 words here, you can surely manage three extra ones, okay? So, uh, this is rather more elegant than actually just crunching out a whole bunch of numbers and hopefully, fingers crossed, get a pattern out of it. This is watertight because we've proven that it's true for one, that means, based on this logic here in steps two and three, that it'll be true for two, and then three, and then four, and on and on forever. Okay? So, T-A-P. Really easy acronym to remember. And my explanation used to mean I used to bring a roll of tape into class and stick it on the board and say, T-A-P-E, those are your steps, but now you have even fewer to learn.